Hi, welcome to episode five of Prepeasy's informal MBA chat series. Today, we are delighted to bring our very first Ivy League college on this panel. We have with us MBA applicants from Columbia Business School. Columbia needs no introduction and is one of the leading schools globally and in US. With very deep inroads in finance, Columbia is a dream college for many. To introduce our panelists today, I will now pass it on to my colleague, Abhinav. Thanks, Anant. Today, first up, we have Manali Chan. Manali did her BTEC from NMIMS. She brings with her four plus years of experience in investment banking and financial services. Her last stint was with IAFL Group. As part of volunteer work, she's worked with IAFL Foundation as well as Teach for India. She has a higher GMAT score of 720. Next up, we have Sukruti Adwant. Sukruti did her BA Economics from LSR, that's part of Delhi University. She brings with her four plus years of experience as well in the private equity space. Her last stint was with pairing private equity partners. As part of your work, she's worked with Yoda, that's Youth Organization in Defense. She has extremely high GMAT score of 740. We are very excited to bring to you Columbia Business School today. All right, let's, uh, let's move on to our first section. That's pick your fit and uh, welcome Sukruti and Manali. Thank you so much again for being here with us. Sukruti, I'm actually going to start with you. So uh, despite being so many complexities with visas, whether that's high tuition and now COVID specifically, right? US continues to be the most desired location for MBA aspirants. What were the top factors that influenced your decision? Uh, to select us as the final geography so firstly when i applied and got it it was last year and, and i got my admission in september so this was all pre-covid uh, but um, i always consider that the us has a lot of opportunities uh, the culture is something that you can easily assimilate into and 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 the language isn't a barrier which i thought might be a problem considering uh, european schools but Mostly, I just thought the opportunities were great. I was applying to some of the schools which were in these uh, in cities like New York, which which I also think um, is has abundant opportunities in terms of uh, recruiting and and not just uh, what I'm going for consulting, but in general, it has a wide variety of uh, offers out there for students. So that, that was my rationale, and I don't think it's going to change much, even though we've been stuck with this uh, pandemic now. Two years down the line, I think things will be going back to normal, or I hope. And uh, that, that was my rationale. So that's why I've stuck to my decision. Great. So I think uh, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, US uh, is one of those geographies where Indians as a community do not face the language barrier. And in terms of work opportunities, I think uh, hands down, US has one of the best opportunities to offer. So a lot of sense in that decision. Moving on, you know, Manali, if I could come to you, Columbia is one of those schools that offers two intakes. There's a Jan intake and there is a September intake. Uh, given you are a Jan candidate and Sukruti is a September candidate, would you want to you know quickly run us through what are the differences between the program structure for the two intakes? What are the differences in terms of opportunities? What are the overlaps or uh, and some of those things between the two intakes? Uh, sure. So the main difference is the internship opportunity, which the JTERM was kind of moved in the summer because basically JTERM was usually end up taking their second semesters in the summer. So they don't get the opportunity to intern. Um, I think it depends on a student. If uh, if you're a sponsored student or you have to go back to your family business or um, you have your old job back. So basically uh, it's for those people who know what they uh, end up or want to do post their MBA, have a, have a backup plan basically to go through for the J-Turners is a perfect opportunity for those people if they don't need an internship requirement. Um, I wouldn't recommend this program for career switchers because that's where uh, the internship plays a key role. Um, but if you have an experience and you know where you want to go or even if uh, an in-semester internship works for you well and it's going to land you with your dream job, I think this program is perfect because other than that, uh, I don't think you end up losing on anything else. You have the same club access, you have the same course list, you have the same teachers, you have uh, the same resources the school offers, uh, except the internship part. So I think that's one of the key and the main difference in these two intakes. 
very well. So I think uh, the insight that comes out very clearly is the main differentiator is the internship. So uh, if you're starting out in Jan, that means you're actually one of those candidates who's probably uh, either going back to a family business or you are somebody who does not want to switch careers because you've chosen that. Uh, you've chosen that intake uh, with this fact that you will not be allowed to intern somewhere. Whereas in September, it's it's a traditional program with a, with a three-minute internship. And for people uh, who are looking to switch careers, just make a note of this that September intake is, is, is the perfect start for you. Uh, perfect. Uh, moving on to Sukriti. Uh, Sukriti, now Colombia has always enjoyed uh, the Ivy League status, right? And it's, it's one of the top schools to target in the US among the other Ivy League schools. And it's situated uh, right, on the, so, like, right around uh, New York, which is again the financial capital of the US as well. So what really differentiates Columbia Business School from other top schools in and around uh, New York and in and around uh, US? Uh, the, the top funds basically okay so I'll, I'll take the u.s comparison first so firstly because columbia is in new york um you have uh, real world practitioners who can actually come to your classes and teach you there's a program called executives in residence where you have people who have like 25 plus years experience in different industries and they have office hours and they actually sit and you can actually visit them uh, while attending classes the, and, and you can do in semester internships. Uh, we have this thing called in semester internships, which you can do in your second year uh, and, and gain that extra experience um, and, and earn some money as well. But, um, and, and if you see the name, it says Columbia University in the city of New York. And, and even CBS says at the very center of business. So I think that's what uh, differentiates Columbia from other Ivy League schools or other top schools. And uh, in terms of other schools in New York, I mean, there's only one Ivy League in New York, right? So that's, that it's obviously much, much different. Right. I think, uh, again, it goes back to the idea of careers and opportunities that New York as a city and as a state provides you, where uh, Columbia, of course, has an edge, uh, not only because of its reputation, its curriculum, also because of the industry access that it provides due to the very fact that it's located in the heart of business. Very well put, Sukriti. You know, on that note, uh, Manali, if I could ask you, Columbia and uh, Stern probably are one of those schools which have traditionally been always identified as the go-to places for finance industry which I think everyone recognizes, but what a lot of people do not realize is as times have changed, uh, some uh, new sectors have emerged. My question to you is, you know, while finance happens to be a traditional forte for Colombia, how is Colombia currently, you know, keeping up with pace with some of the new age emerging uh, sectors, so to say, you know, deep tech, entrepreneurship, social consulting, or uh, a lot of the sectors that have emerged recently? Uh, so yes, Columbia is known for finance school and it is, it is, uh, it has excellent finance courses, the value investing program, the B program. Uh, but in these past few years, um, Columbia has had like a bunch of very well-known listed startups, for example, uh, uh, the impossible meat, uh, that was something which came out from Columbia, it was a Columbia grad. So Columbia has this something called as Lang Center, which is basically for tech uh, and startups. It's a it's a department you can say which kind of helps students, gives the resources, uh, connections, networks, guides them throughout their startup journey. And uh, especially in the summer, they have something called as a summer startup track, the SST, which uh, there is. Um, of value money as well in the end, which they kind of end up distributing. I can't remember the value now, but so it's a basically a program where you get mentors for your startup idea. You apply with a startup idea with your team and uh, you are then allotted mentors, uh, specific peer groups, which kind of helps you, your peers kind of help you in your startup journey, how they, so in the peer group, you have like different stages of startup. Some are just starting, some are in their ideation phase, some are in their MVP. So everyone is a different phase as of now. So they kind of help together to make your product, your startup grow as a, in general. So over time, these have grown quite a bit. The resources have just added. So that is something which Columbia definitely offers in the startup and the tech phase. In the consulting phase, I think maturity kind of placement happens in consulting in Columbia right, right these days. It also could be because the industry is growing and people really prefer 
to be consultant these days and it's easy to get a job or land a lot of job in consulting so yes definitely uh, columbia has a, a lot of consulting focus all the top companies mckinsey bain bcg come up on campus to recruit so again it has a, a very well mca club which is the management consulting club which is quite known which kind of helps you throughout your consulting process makes you interview prep etc things so in all these space columbia has definitely grown quite a bit and uh, yes definitely there's more space to grow but i can't say it's just known as a finance school anymore hope it answers your question of course absolutely i think you you summarized it pretty well that it's it's no longer a finance heavy uh, or finance dependent school at all right i think the school has invested a lot in the last few years to ensure that whether you are starting up or you have your own idea and uh, whether you are basically doing a tech startup or any other startup the school provides enough resources uh, to support you to help you to guide you and uh, provide you with an ecosystem of mentors uh, whether it's funding or any other support that you want to ensure that uh, your mvp actually grows and uh, you make it big with your idea and secondly of course you mentioned with consulting that uh, consulting of course is, is growing globally and especially in the us so columbia is a top choice for all top consulting companies so i think uh, comes out pretty well uh moving on so kruti I'll, i'll just come to you with the next one uh, one emerging trend in the in the us uh, that we've seen is the introduction of stem programs and stem degrees so uh, does columbia already have a stem designated program or no so yes uh, we actually got the news in feb that uh, columbia is now stem and uh, you you get it irrespective of the uh, subjects you choose so you don't have to tailor your course in any way to get the stem certification and they even uh, offered it to the graduates of 2019 so it applies all the way back to 2019 it was very cool of them just just to you know also help our viewers uh, do you mind just expanding a bit on how does a stem degree support uh, somebody studying in the us yeah so uh, normally you get an opt uh, when you graduate from a business school in the us which allows you to work for one additional year uh, stay in the us for one additional year but under a stem uh, certification you get to stay for 3 years after you graduate so that's a huge difference and it opens up opportunities some employers are more willing to hire internationals because now they know that you're going to be around for 3 years it, it definitely makes a difference very very interesting insight coming for, for our viewers people who may have missed so kriti like uh, she just pointed out columbia now offers a stem degree so for people who are worried about you know immigration rules and not having work a work permit etc uh be rest assured i think columbia uh, is now offering a stem designated degree not just prospectively but they have actually gone a step ahead by offering it retrospectively for, for people who graduated even in the prior years so that concerns definitely should be addressed uh, with this answer uh this brings us to my last question of this section which is you know around a very uh, hot topic which is gmat and manali if i could ask you gmat is of course a tough nut to crack it is one of those things that keeps people you know on the fence uh, and not uh, allow them to you know apply and us schools are of course known to uh, be very heavy on gmat and we've seen from both your profiles that you had great gmats too so while picking your shortlist of schools uh, how much uh, of a role did your gmat score individually play while selecting columbia or even without uh, let's say stellar gmat were you always confident enough that because of your profile because of a tightly knit application you always thought you had a good shot uh so i would be frank out here to be honest uh it does play a role it is important uh i give my gmat twice i think and uh, with the initial score i did apply to my dream schools but i couldn't get in so i and the feedback which i got from my uh, admission committee was something which that i think you should try reattempting retaking your gmat so uh, i think it is an important uh, decision maker it's not the only decision maker i would say but uh, it also again depends on what profile you come from how many years years of experience you have the more the better so i came with a very limited amount of experience so i therefore needed a higher gmat score to crack in so again it's all a weightage game but uh, uh, yes it did play a role uh, in selecting my schools uh, but again columbia was my dream school like so i i didn't have a uh, uh, a higher school dream so it definitely played out well for me but i think 
I mean, all incoming candidates who are looking to apply should at least think about this uh, and should make sure they have a, an average GMAT score, which the school requires. Uh, if you have something which you think you're lagging on your profile, like work experience or social work or any kind of something which uh, you feel is not good enough, you can probably make up on your GMAT because that's something which you can take multiple times. And the schools usually are okay with students who take uh, who take multiple attempts but can end up getting a good GMAT score in the end. So, Sukruti, uh, I'll also ask you this. Uh, would you resonate uh, with Manali on her thoughts or you have something else to add here on the same question? No, definitely. Uh, I think the GMAT score is really important and I know people will have you believe that it's, it's a rounded decision, but as international students, you should definitely be aiming for the best score that you can get. I was not, uh, my extracurriculars were maybe not that strong because I was working in private equity and there wasn't really that much time. And I knew that I needed to compensate somewhere else for sure. Uh, and, and I think the score that I have definitely helped with that. And, and obviously your profile needs to be strong or they won't even consider you. But the thing is, Indians, at least all of us tend to have pretty high GMAT scores. So you definitely need to stand out just a little bit. Absolutely. I think uh, very well put Sukriti and Manali. There are no two ways about it. Uh, you're competing against the best for the best spot. So you need to have a stellar GMAT and definitely around the average mark, even if you have a very good profile otherwise. And another takeaway that I got from Manali's answer is for candidates out there, you know, don't be disheartened by rejection. Uh, most people who have applied to schools have seen rejection uh, in either prior year or in the current intake. But what matters is you, you know, stay determined and ultimately you can crack your dream school too. So thanks a lot, both of you for this, uh, you know, uh, your valuable insights on the section. Thanks a lot for such an insightful uh, first section. We'll, we'll now move on to the second section of this interview, which is called demystifying the application. And probably Manali, I could start with you in this section. Could you take us through, you know, uh, the CBS MBA application and how many stage stages does it comprise? If you could give us a broad overview of the uh, application of CBS. Uh, yes. So if I remember correctly, uh, there was an application which we had to submit. Uh, there was an interview process and uh, you get your result after the interview. Uh, so basically the two stage process. Uh, the application is consists of like three essays, I think, uh, two letter of recommendations, one resume and a couple of your details like GMAT, transcripts, etc. things. So that's the whole application and uh, the interview process. Usually you get an interview call after a month or maybe three or four weeks uh, after you submit your application. That was, I think that's the time I remember. And after the interview process, you should get a call within a week. I think that's, that's the normal trend. Uh, it should usually be shorter than a week, but that's as soon as the interviewer submits uh, his application, you get an email saying that the interviewer has submitted your application. Uh, within a week after that, probably you should hear back from the school if it's a yes or a no. Oh, Got yeah, it. I think I have a question. Yeah. So it's basically a, it's a standard process. You have three essays followed by an interview and uh, typically in seven days time, you should know uh, whether you're in a, uh, or not. But there is a difference. Uh, yep. Like I, I did early decision. So um, you, uh, that's basically you're committing to Columbia. So if it's your topic, you should definitely consider that. So then you hear from the school within three, four weeks on for the interview invite, and then you get your decision. Like I, after my interview, I heard in two days. But uh, if you apply a regular decision, um, it's a standard process where they start rolling out uh, your interview invites once they've seen all applications. Over here, they're seeing your application, not really comparing you with anyone else, evaluating you in absolute terms, and then. Uh, inviting you but if you do regular decision it takes longer it takes as just as long as the other schools fair enough fair enough so so Kruti, if i can just ask a follow-up question on this uh, you mind expanding on the essays uh, that columbia requires is it static every year or there's always a change and they always roll out a new question uh, year on year so uh, there is one so you have three questions one is 500 words and i think the others are 250 each uh, the third question I've seen rotating over the years. So the first two are pretty standard about what you've done so far and what you want to do, what are your short term and long term goals. And uh, apart from that, they ask you why Columbia? That's a pretty big answer that, that never changes. And the third one is, uh, so in my year, I think the question was who is a leader you admire and why? 
but um, I think this year it's something about which which is your favorite book or movie character that you resonate with. So it, that one changes every year. So right, so it's not completely a static uh, uh, application. You do have some standard questions which find their way into the application around goals and why the school, which is the case with most other V schools too. But uh, be prepared uh, about you know some uh, new questions every year, like Sukriti mentioned. Uh, coming back to you, Manali, uh, if you could you know share uh, with our viewers the interview experience that you had and uh, from whatever you heard with the, from your classmates, your friends. Uh, how is the interview process? Is it you know uh, done via an alum? Is it uh, with the adcom? Is it online? Do one does one need to uh, go to the campus? Uh, just share share with our viewers the interview process for CBS. Oh yes, so usually the interview process happens through an alum, uh, but uh, I I don't know if I was lucky or unlucky. Uh, mine was taken by an adcom. Uh, while, so as soon as you hear back, you get an email from the Columbia University saying that congratulations, you have been selected for the interview round. You go to your page and you basically have to select the cities which you are in and which you want to conduct the interview for. So I was in Mumbai, so I selected Mumbai, but unfortunately at that point of time, there was no one in Mumbai. Uh, there was, I, I, I couldn't get a match with the interviewer. Uh, the interviewer match usually is in a, the, pro, the person would be similar to your profile. So uh, I think either would be someone who's done, I did my engineering. So someone with an engineer background who worked in finance or worked in a sector where you have done something very similar. And uh, that's a person whom you can relate better and the, in the, in, even the interviewer can relate to better to you. So that's someone uh, very similar to your profile. Uh, but unfortunately, I didn't get that one. Uh, I tried some other cities, but uh, I couldn't make it uh, the in, either the interview or busy or something and that's what happened. So it was a couple of days back and forth and I wrote back to the school and the school was, I think at that type of point of time, conducting an information session in Mumbai. So they had an adcom person come down to Mumbai in uh, any which ways. So the school was pretty much generous enough to offer me that, that you know what, since there's been quite a bit of back forth, why don't we conduct the interview for you? So um, we met, I think in four seasons in Mumbai. And it was a normal coffee chat, how it should be. It's very casual. Uh, she didn't give me stress at all. She didn't give me any questions which were kind of, you know, nitpicking me on something or the other. She asked me about my profile. She asked me what I like to do, what are my strength, weakness. Uh, she asked me a couple of about my work roles, how I felt it, what I want to do later in life. Uh, basically trying to um, understand what I wrote in my application was true enough. And if I was the person whom they had imagined by reading my application. So uh, I think that was, I think that was, I felt that was her key takeaway from me. So uh, yes, it's a pretty casual process. No need to stress on anything. Uh, just be true to yourself and you'll be okay. Very well said. So uh, I think the school's been very flexible, uh, as you've mentioned, because uh, first of all, they ask you to select a city of your choice where you want to, where you want the interview to be conducted. They match you with an alum uh, who comes from a similar background or a similar profile as yours. And if that doesn't work out, uh, even the adcom can actually, uh, you know, come forward and say that, Hey, why don't we do it for you? Uh, and as part of the interview, you said it's, it's a standard interview as, as most other schools, they are majorly, they just want to validate your profile. And they just want to make sure that you're the same person who's written your issues and who submitted the profile, or the submitted the application. Though. If I could just step in here and maybe Sukruti, you could take this, given that Manali didn't have a interview with one of the alums who matched her profile. In case if you did, would you be able to, you know, share with our viewers is uh, in case the interviewer uh, with a, from a similar profile, uh, does the interview also, you know, tend to go a little bit on the technical side of the work or is it still a fit interview? Yeah, so mine was with uh, an alum and um, so this is, these interviews are supposed to be uh, application blind. So they haven't read your application. They only have your resume, which you have to send to them. And then they evaluate you independently. Uh, and so they don't have any context on what you've written on your in your essays. And I struggled a bit to find someone in my city as well. It turns out there was a glitch in the system. But I eventually matched with someone who had a sort of similar profile. Now, you should remember that these are alums who want to help get you get in. Like they're, they're on your side in a way. Like they just want to make sure you're not a complete liar or something. But uh, so what? don't stress too much. I was very stressed in mine. But also remember that 
you should be prepared like i know it says that it's a resume resume interview but in my case she actually did end up asking me about what i wrote in my essays etc so that threw me off a little and i got a little nervous but uh, and i didn't even know if i was going to get in but uh, yeah be prepared for everything no matter what it says like even if it says resume just be like completely like in touch with what you said in your essays etc sure i think uh, given the stakes are so high uh, nervousness is something that is quite normal but as sukriti mentioned be prepared and both of both from manali's and sukriti's answer the theme that emerges out is you know be true to yourself know your application inside out there not trying to grill you the idea is to you know help you get in and just validate your stuff because you've already gone through one round of shortlist and which is why you're sitting uh, in that interview so another great session thanks a lot sukriti and manali for sharing with us the application details about the columbia business school all right let's start with our third section here that's support and guidance and i'm actually going to jump to manali and going to ask you this first now this is a very taxing process people people actually do it for years as well and uh, they are still not successful at times did you seek any external support to go through the whole process uh, did somebody help you uh, with your essays with the overall journey oh yes absolutely you can't do this process alone i'll be very honest on this uh, i did take uh, help from a consultant as well uh, in fact i took two consultants one person was just trying to tell me on as to how i should write in general what should my story be what should my how i should uh, like the small little things you do in life how it can matter and how you can make a story out of it so that's something uh, which a third party can really see well from your perspective because in the end you may not feel it's that important in your life but it can play a very crucial role so uh, and there was one consultant who helped me edit it because i'm a terrible writer so uh, definitely uh, i did take consultant help and uh, if you are a good writer if you can express your thoughts well it's not needed for you but if you cannot do that i think uh, an external i mean a consultant help is like it's it's okay to take a help it's it's not something which i think the school also understands they kind of know that that every 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 student can take a consultant help everyone doesn't have the ability to write that well or express a thought well so it's something which everyone in this school process understands so yes thanks a lot manali for you know for being so honest with our viewers and uh, actually telling us that you did take consultant some sometimes we've seen people uh, do not want to share that given that it's slightly personal and as as you mentioned you know it's okay to raise your hand and say that you need help there is nothing wrong with that while it is your story a professional an expert who's gone through the process can you know help you structure your story slightly better they know what is the kind of things that people want to hear how do you market yourself well and some people lack that marketing skill while well, they may be brilliant otherwise so for our viewers out there you know uh, as manali mentioned it is okay and the consultant sometimes can be a game changer in your entire story it is okay to reach out and for help uh, if you know i could just build on to that question and come to you sukriti uh, help is not just through an external consultant sometimes that support mechanism is available Uh, within your own family ecosystem within your friends within your colleagues so you know if i could ask you outside uh, first of all you could also maybe uh, help us understand whether you, did you take an external consultant as well and uh, outside of that what kind of support did you have from the friends families that uh, you had around you and did you actively reach out to uh, your uh, support system around you yeah so definitely firstly i did take a consultant uh they help you you know kind of put your story together and think about what you've done in the past and how it relates to what you want to do in the future and and they've helped so many people that they kind of know what goes and what doesn't so it definitely helps I, in fact my consultant helped me all the way till the interview stage where she did a mock interview with me and and i would recommend taking one there's no uh, uh, harm in uh, getting extra help apart from that i uh, definitely relied on my family to bring out these instances from my childhood that they thought i could use in my essays i relied on my friends to give me feedback on whether this is uh, coming out well whether i seem genuine in it whether this is true to who i am and and not just these people but i would also recommend reaching out to maybe like your alums like i went to lsr so reaching out to people who have similar profiles and then have applied to all these schools reaching out to people who maybe don't have similar profiles but might be willing to help you 
So just put it out there, put your essay out there. I know it's a very personal thing, but the more feedback you get, uh, the more you'll know whether you're going in the right direction or not. That said, don't get confused by too many people. At one point, I did get overwhelmed because I asked so many people. But I, so know what you want to write and then just kind of like see if you can get the confirmation from these people. Fair enough. So I think, uh, as you said, that family, of course, plays a very important role. But apart from the family, you should also reach out to your alma mater, your alumni who could actually help you who went through the same journey and if they are willing to support you or give you feedback on your issues. Uh, Manali, I'm just going to ask you a follow-up question and this is for our viewers. Uh, there is, uh, this consulting business is so huge, so big and it's only growing. Uh, is there a specific mechanism that you followed uh, to shortlist certain consultants? Uh, anything that you want to share with the viewers on a particular way that you, they can actually find the right set of consultants to work with? So I think I did meet a lot of consultants. Uh, the first meeting uh, did happen with a bunch of consultants. But I think in the end, you should rely on someone who kind of relates to you well, who kind of understands you well as a person and gets your story well, and will probably help you structure your story, like Supriti said, in the way you are and not kind of change the whole head or tail of it. Because in the end, the application should just be yours, should just talk about you in general. So I think you should definitely go ahead and have a couple of meetings with the first few consultants, which you kind of know, or your friends and families have gone through. And uh, like I have, I had a cousin who would visit the same consultant and uh, she got into a great school. So I, and since I know how she is and I kind of relate to her, so I thought probably, you know what, she's, he's gonna be a perfect fit for me. He'd probably understand me better. So I went to him and it just worked out well for us because he had worked with uh, the cousin of mine. So he kind of knew how I worked and it just, it was just smoother. So definitely like references, I think uh, that helps because uh, it will not only help you shortlist the consultant, which is there, the industry has number, but it will also help you kind of find your perfect match, I guess you can say so, uh, which will help you write your essays or edit your essays in the way you want. Thanks a lot, Manali, for you know uh, sharing with us how you went about selecting your consultant. Uh, it definitely, given the number of uh, options that are there in the market for our viewers, you know, uh, it's okay to meet a lot of people, understand which is that one person, one organization you want to work with, because you don't want to be you know working with an organization who cannot relate to your story or who is not you know flexible to work in your style. Ultimately, there is. Uh, end goal with which you're going to the consultant and unless you feel comfortable uh, whether that is the person to help you I, it will not really uh, be that meaningful thanks a lot i think uh, the, you've been very candid in this section and both of you have shared uh, really valuable inputs for our viewers uh, about you know how you what kind of support you had uh, while completing your application Thanks a lot. So, you know, this brings us to our next section, shifting gears. This is a fun section, you know. So, Kruti, maybe you could start this one. There are a lot of myths out there. There's a lot of information asymmetry out there. Could you, you know, uh, given that you've recently uh, just gone through the process, could you bust some of the myths that you came across while your application journey about either Columbia in particular or in general about the whole MBA application uh, game? Okay, so one of the fears I had regarding Columbia was that because it's a city school and there are a lot of people from New York who actually go here, that uh, everyone will be in their little cliques and they won't uh, really be uh, talking to the cluster or, or the class as a whole. And uh, maybe they, like you might feel left out, but that's not been the case at all. Uh, everyone's very inclusive and everyone's very friendly and, and what you hear about like how New York uh, has a certain image, that's not true at all. Everyone's been very warm and friendly. So that is definitely something you should consider. And uh, the other point was on international students uh, the, uh, and what the ratio would be like at a, a school like Columbia. It's over 40% in my class. So that's pretty high and, and we have a very diverse bunch. So quite happy with that. Fair enough. Uh, Manali, you want to take uh, the same question? Uh, I think I absolutely agree with what Supriti said. Like, it's, uh, even I have the same concern that it's, it's, it's a city, probably people have their own bunch. And majority come from America itself, at 60% is uh, domestic people. So majority will already have their own friend circles. So you probably not need to mingle that well with uh, the domestic crowd. But that's definitely not the case. Um, 
even uh, with the situation we are in right now, we did end up managed meeting a couple of times in parks or everything. So people are pretty friendly out here. They help you out with every process we went through. I know a couple of my classmates helped my other classmates find houses, renting as we're shifting, moving, etc. So people are pretty friendly out here. Uh, then I, I mean, I guess more friendly than I could have imagined. So that, that, that's definitely one of the plus points of Columbia. And uh, regarding the admi uh, admission process, I think um, the general myth is that, you know, you have to be perfect uh, to get into Columbia. You have to be the perfect candidate with the perfect score, perfect experience, perfect social work, perfect extracurricular, but that's definitely not the case. Everyone comes from very different backgrounds out here. Everyone has worked in various different fields you wouldn't have even imagined. Uh, and Columbia respects that. People respect who you are in general. They kind of understand your story well. And they are looking for people who come from various different backgrounds and not just finance or not just tech or not just consulting. So they are looking for different uh, diverse backgrounds. So I would encourage everyone to apply to Columbia and not just uh, think that it would be a very finance focused school. So they will probably not take me if you're coming from a startup background. I do have something to add to that on academics. So my undergrad score wasn't perfect. And, and I was worried that I wouldn't get into uh, any school because of that. And Columbia actually even says so, like they said my, in my information session that we're not going to hold it against you if you were not studying when you were 18. So it's okay, we're not going to judge you based on your academic score then. That's why you have the GMAT to show that you actually can study and, and get a high score. So I think you should definitely like don't like eliminate any school thinking your score may not, your GPA may not be perfect. Great. Absolutely. I had I didn't have a great GMAT. I mean, I didn't have a great GPA. And there is a section in the application, like optional, where you can justify as to why you didn't have it. And they kind of respect that as well, which she's absolutely she said it very well. So yes, I don't think they hold it against you. Great. So I think uh, thanks a lot again, you know, for being uh, for sharing the uh, experiences you had and, you know, busting the myth that uh, there is no a perfect profile that Columbia is looking for, be it, you know, in terms of having a perfect GMAT, having above par academic score in your undergrad. They re respect diversity, they respect your background. You don't need to be from a particular type of a, a background or there is no standard fit, right? So I think uh, very important insights coming from both of you in this section too. And uh, like all other sections, this has been a great section too. Right. This brings us to our last section for the session. That's words of wisdom. And uh, let me start with Sukruti here. Sukruti, top two, three suggestions, words of wisdom for uh, applicants who are applying to CBS this year. Definitely. And this, this is a big one for me as well. Um, don't underestimate yourself. Don't undersell yourself. There is a time and place for modesty. And in our culture, I know we inherently are not good at tooting our own horns. We're not good at singing praises of ourselves, but trust me, the other applications, the other candidates, they're not holding back and you have to fight the urge to be modest and be humble and just like talk about the things you've done and celebrate them because, because they want to know what you've achieved and, and don't hold back here. This is not the time uh, because I know I uh, suffer from imposter syndrome and sometimes I even wonder whether I'm good enough, but you are, you all are good enough. Don't, don't uh, undersell yourself at all. And the other thing I would say is if Columbia is your topic, definitely apply for early decision, lock it in. I applied within a month, I had my admission and then I was just chilling uh, after September. So, so if, if you know this is the school for you, uh, do early decision, it definitely helps. Great. So again, the same point coming out, you know, early applications do matter. Please put in an early application if you're sure, if you have other pieces of your application sorted, if your GMAT is done, if you've sorted out your story, uh, please don't uh, wait for the last minute. Put in an early application. It can make a big difference. Sukriti has clearly put it out there. And another big point that Sukriti made is there is a place for modesty. This is not the place. You know, This is your journey. You have to know how to sell yourself. And please don't hold back because even if you do, others won't. And you're, you're competing against the best in the world. Uh, Manali, if I could ask you, uh, what would be your words of wisdom for the incoming applicants, incoming uh, candidates? I think I would absolutely resonate what Sukhruti said. Oh, don't understand yourself, definitely. Just put in everything you think is important. And one, the only thing I would just say, just be yourself. You don't have to, you don't have to copy someone or you don't have to make a profile which is very similar to someone who got it. 
just be yourself and the school gets that understands that knows that well so uh, just uh, just be to, just be true to yourself very well i think uh, a common theme from this section has been that just be yourself figure out what's your story and how and what is the best way for you to express it towards the admissions committee and just do not be modest at all this is this is the place where you probably want to show off some of your skills and some of your achievements i think uh, very great like great insights coming uh, from this section from the session overall this was the last section that we had and i, I just want to thank sukruti manali both of you for taking out the time i know your schedules are very hectic right now you already uh, in new york uh, and we just thank you so much for taking out the time and doing this with us thank you